Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Guri. I'm a consultant at Fertility Plus, Fertility Courses and Homerton Fertility Centre. So today I'm going to talk to you about a very interesting case. Now, at the base, let's consider this. When should you give the antagonist and the agonist trigger? Should there be a 12-hour difference between the antagonist and the agonist trigger. So let's test this concept. So the review which I'm going to do is based on a case discussion and does the time interval between the last GnRH antagonist and the GnRH agonist affect efficacy. So here's my case. 32 year old lady unexplained infertility for four years, AMH of 16.3, ovulation induction tried, intrauterine insemination tried, and stimulation was on an antagonist protocol without any pretreatment, 225 of HMG and antagonist from day five in the evening. So I, I moved away from the assessment and said, let's not give it in the morning, let's give it in the evening. On day 12, we give the antagonist at 8 p.m., HMG at 8 p.m., and the agonist trigger at 9 p.m. 12 hours later, we did the blood test, which showed the FSH to be 37.6, LH to be 127, progesterone of 15 nanomol per liter, and estrogen crossing 15,000. Again, as I've always said, look at two important parameters for your trigger. Look at the FSH in the LH rise and also keep an eye on your progesterone rise. I think it tells us a very different story at times. 13 oocytes were obtained, 10 were fertilized and 6 blastocysts were frozen. So here what we are looking for is, and then I went to this paper which said, there's the interval between the last GNH antagonist and the GnRH agonist trigger affect oocyte recovery rates. So let's go back to the basics now. So GnRH antagonists occupy the pituitary GnRH receptors by competitive inhibition and these have to be displaced by the GnRH agonist trigger. So the common practice is keep a 12-hour interval between the GnRH antagonist and the agonist. The theory is that the high affinity binding that occurs with GnRH antagonist receptors may not get displaced within a few hours and this can get or rather interfere with the efficacy of GnRH agonist and hence the concept of a 12-hour interval. So the simple question which this paper tried to answer was will the response of a GnRH agonist trigger depend on the timing of the last GnRH antagonist. So let's look at the materials. 53 normal gonadotrophic women, GnRH antagonist protocol with GnRH agonist trigger, all assessments at 800 hours, decapeptal 0.2 given when the leading follicles were 18 millimeter, an egg collection done 36 hours later, morning after trigger, estrogen, progesterone and LH tests were done and the intervals between the antagonist and the agonist was group 1 less than 2.5 hours, group 2 2.5 to 6 hours, group 3 4.1 to 7 hours and group 4 more than 7 hours. So let's look at the results. We looked at the LH on the day after trigger, progesterone day after trigger, number of oocytes, number of metaphase 2 oocytes, number of 2 PNs, oocyte recovery rate and fertilization rate. In fact, in all these groups statistically there was no difference. Irrespective of when the antagonist and the agonist were given, the chance of getting oocytes and getting a good fertilization was exactly the same. So let's go to the discussion on this topic. So what do 
the, is a role of the antagonist. Now, the, uh, or rather, the role of the agonist. And the agonist's role is to displace the GNH antagonist from the pituitary receptors. And this causes a release of FSH and LH. For this, you require an intact hypothalamic pituitary axis. In few patients, you will see that the LH response is poorer and the LH response is less and this happens in very lean women and also women who have been on long-term OC pills. Now the average elimination, or rather the half-life, and there are two antagonists which we use. One is Ganinalex, which is 16.2 hours, and Cetralex, which is 20.6 hours. So there's generally a half-life is very much similar. And an agonist which can successfully displace the antagonist and can induce an LH surge within the first half-life of the antagonist. So, in fact, even within the first half-life, you can the agonist has the ability to displace the antagonist. Now, eight hours later, or eight to twelve hours later, what is the the ideal LH level? And I don't think we really know that. We think that fifteen seems to be adequate. And serum progesterones of more than 10 nanomole suggests a threshold between adequate and inadequate and with a, at present we think that. Some researchers also suggest that the LH level 12 hours later should be between 12 and 15 milli international units per ml. So what does this study tell us? This study tells us that in fact the time interval between giving an antagonist and agonist trigger does not really matter. So the entire concept of whether you keep this for an interval of 12 hours really doesn't matter. And that to some extent will answer the question is what should be the time interval between the antagonist and the agonist. I'll say does not matter. Be careful with very lean women and be careful with women who are on long term OC pill and that's where you may see an inadequate LH response. Thank you very much. If you do like this talk, please like the page and share it. Thank you very much.